we are not them, we are not uh, the general herd or whatever, we're different from them. It's like, the wrong time, everybody's been trying to get like what the punk thing is, like what they want to say across through the media, and, and nobody's done it, right? We need our own uh, laws. So can't convince the older people because their brains That's are already fucked. Well, well, some, some, some but then some of the young kids' brains are fucked too, right? This is a question of like, if you take some young wise person, like you're an old wise person, and like take some young idiot and grow up to be an old idiot, right? Okay? You can't change systems overnight. And our part within that system isn't to change anything, even though we'd like to, but it has to be everybody trying to change something. One person can't stand up on a mountain and preach. The big thing about the punk uh, theme is, uh, is that it's, it's not really controlled by any one person or any one group. It's uh, more of an individualistic thing. It's up to us, right? For sure. We gotta get it together. You know, get our own uh, shit together. The whole punk scene started to attract a bunch of geeks who thought our resistance ideals were uh, an excuse to get into a fight and prove their own masculinity and whatever. Or insecurity. It's all a bunch of fucking garbage, man. It's all a fucking bunch of bullshit. <laughs> That's all he has to say about it. We have to protect our ideals against, you know, people who come in and tread on our toes and say what we're doing is wrong. We have to keep saying to ourselves, this is right. I mean, you can change slightly to fit in with, with wherever you are, to suit whatever it is, but, I mean, you're always yourself. You always know that you are, you know? If you're a punk, I mean, you just know it, right? So this is a movement.
what the hippies did was that they tried to change the world through pacifism and love and the thing that they were best noted for was getting the shit kicked out of them by cops and yahoos, yeah. you know? I mean, it would have been a great thing to go through if it really did, you know? Well, they brought that around some changes, but I guess we're too malcontent to settle for them. They sort of petered out that point of history, and in a way, we sort of took up where they left off. There's a whole new generation of punks coming out. There's new young, young suburban punks. At first, when everybody was dressing really raunchy, and people were scared of us and, and, and didn't know what we were, so they were beating us up, right? And we just went, hey, hey, we just want to be individuals. Hey, we're just different, right? Don't, don't beat us up. They lust Corvettes, and they envy punks because we're free. We don't have to play their game. <laughs> A lot of people, I'm not saying that that's something that they recognize, a lot of people will see that and say, oh, we're not envious, we don't fear you and we don't envy you, but why do they come out with needless violence against us? I mean, I don't understand violence against what we do. Got some yeah. suburban person with long hair and jeans and Van Halen on the back sort of didn't know what was happening here tonight and he said, punk sucks to sort of a few people in the park and well, they this, did that this, to him. this was his radio. And, you know, uh, most of the great things that went down through civilization, the people who, who were in the forefront of great inventions and great philosophies were always shunned in their time. They were always thought of as heretics or fanatics. Well, Socrates was a punk, Putting certainly. Their, uh... I mean, to go around asking such annoying questions of people and forcing them to think. Yeah. I mean, God, they, they poisoned them for that, didn't they? What's going to happen to us? <laughs> I like the bands as, as they come along. They're a good mixture, and uh, uh, I enjoy the punk music uh, the best of all. And uh, I, I, it's, it's something lively. There's something lively about it, and there's a lot of energy in it. things that happen around you you find on a business level people even in the music business the people who run the record labels and all that they don't want to hear you question things like that punk music got successful because it, it was a novelty item it was it was novel to hear somebody spout off like a fanatic about not liking this and not liking that and for a while it becomes a, a media thing where the media thought isn't this isn't this quaint listening to these people babble about not liking this and not liking that and they, they go and they hit each other and when they dance some of the people end up getting cut and they're, they're bruised and all that and they think oh isn't this primal and animalistic and <laughs> Tension. You ever get hurt? No. Oh yeah. Bruises, bruises, nothing more. Look at his back. Look at this. Friendly tussles with friends. <laughs> it's better than killing somebody on the street.
soul to sing. It's, it's just a song. But it closed about an hour before. I'm running on a little bit stream. If I could only write what I'm thinking, a curious and strange seas. Keep it up on me, secretly, and sympathy, ain't hey, what I need, oh, cause you don't, you don't feel so for me, hey, I'm running on, there's a tree, I'm running on, there's a tree, Thank you. 
I made you little plastic bag on your face. You're so cool, hanging out. Stupid glue is the only thing. Now you're high, up in tune. You gotta go on and stop from queers. You can get killed in Regent Park. You can get killed in Regent Park. Now the fuse has lost your mind. Your sanity is quite questionable. The artist out. Wild eye, looking to kill someone tonight. You can get killed in the car. Ah! Ah! I eat some crazy hot tonight. <laughs> So much an attempt to uh, change society. It's just, well, the only extent that I would want to change society is just so the rest of society leaves me alone. We look different because it's against society. We don't want to look like everybody else. We don't want to look like secretaries and businessmen, you know? Like, fuck that. I mean, they're all robots. That's what they are. They're all. I ain't got nothing to lose. I ain't got nothing to lose. A lot of people think punks are criminals because of drugs, because of, you know, violence, because of, you know, robberies, I mean, anything. As soon as you become a punk, you automatically become a scapegoat for everything that happens. They blame everything that happens, like vandalism or anything like that, they blame it on us people. Well, this is an anti-police harassment rally, but what's also significant is there's a lot of punks here because the punks have been really being harassed lately. Like as last weekend at the Turning Point, there was a gig that happened. There were just police all over the place. There was something like told probably about 35 policemen there, and so people thought that this would be a good time to get together and show the police that we didn't really like what was going on. It's not a very comforting feeling knowing that I can I can't walk down Young Street, Queen Street or even come here and not be harassed.
What they're trying to do is intimidate, intimidate people, and it's not intimidating me at all. I think it's a little bit hairy every once in a while if you get, you know, in a corner with a policeman and, uh, you know, they throw you around the washroom at the turning point for a little while or something like that, or they come wandering into your house uh, with sledgehammers and proceed to tear it apart and, you know, they're all armed and things like that. But if you let the police get you down, then they'll always keep you down. And then if you're not, you know, they'll just make you do nothing. So I'm not somebody who just wants to sit around and do nothing, so I'm not going to let them get to me. You know? There's just no way. Is what we do. Coping is what the society does. Yes, because the they have to cope. Yeah. But we choose to tolerate it. Society tries to cope with us, but we have to tolerate them. <laughs> <laughs> Write it on the wall. Where's my marker? <laughs> the song next week. Yeah. <laughs> it's very no. easy. We're survivalists no matter welfare, what happens. We're, we, we're on welfare. We eat out of the garbage. We have breakfast at the Scott Mission. We got credit all over the fucking place that we can't pay. <coughs> yeah, exactly. And, we, 
we don't need any money. There's no, there's no need for money in society, really. In, in Not when way. somebody pays your rent and the food's free. What else is there? I'll show him the fridge. Bob. Bob the fridge. Bob. Bob tells a big story. Our shopkeeper around the corner gave us some rabbits, rabbit skins, rabbit everything, entrails, everything. So we got rabbit fetuses. And we keep them in the freezer because someone's going to make an earring out of them one day. And other than that, Every Saturday, about 8 o'clock, oh, when all the stores 8 close, 8.30, 8.30, okay, at 8.30 we go out, but at 8 o'clock the stores close, they put out all their garbage for the night because it's not going to stay until Monday. And we go shopping. And we go shopping. We take our little baskets and our little red wagons and our bicycles and our dogs, and the, the, dog dogs, the dogs sniff out all the little, little pieces of they meat. They find us the meat. Yeah. We find the vegetables. Yeah, because we know what vegetables look like and they don't like them. <laughs> This ain't the mission, this ain't, no, this ain't the hill. Everything we got, we get out of the garbage. Because, like, we live off other people's waste. Even our Scott Mission food is just waste of the industry. The industry can't push it fast enough, so they give it to the Scott Mission and we eat it. They're going to throw it out anyway, so... we might as well eat it. It's garbage in reality. Yeah, and, and a lot of people have, have really gotten to the point where they can't understand that. Like, we're getting things out of the garbage. We're not stealing. See, the whole <laughs> idea is they, they, they assume that to live like we do, we must be adopting a criminal lifestyle. But we aren't adopting a criminal lifestyle because we don't have to really get into crime to do anything. I mean, we don't have to rob banks to finance our operation. So it doesn't really make much difference to us because we got nothing to lose. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. we're not afraid of what they can do to us because they can't do anything to us, sure to kill us and even pff, still then. They is them. Them is a ge generalization of fucking anyone who isn't us. We are us. They are them. Fuck them. Don't fuck with us. This is so gross. This is so gross. gross. Uh, real quick. It's, it's, it's like nothing. dog food. Don't Are listen you to it? these wimps. They're just not used to it. Hey, they're gonna take people? <laughs> you just ain't hungry enough, eh? Hey, baby, wanna make some cash? Get off your legs and make a dash. What's dash? Dash with cash. Cut off your legs, say hey, it's for a good cause. like with the punks and things as them creating their own culture like that's from direct action where you know people are you know they want entertainment so they create their own entertainment they want to put out records they put out their own records you're not relying on all this you know huge corporate structure around us we're doing it ourselves and things nobody really wants to work or no one wants to wants to conform to what the government says i'm planning on a career as a bomb you know we live on our own we make our own money within our own little circle. We generate what we can to survive. I got myself a part-time job, though. Sewing <laughs> <laughs> lace and elastic onto kinky underwear. <laughs>
the comment. Yeah. By your permission. One total fucking second. Oh my god. Guy took a knife to him, he got hungry. <laughs> I don't have to do anything. I don't have to have any responsibility yet. I mean, there's certain responsibilities I have to myself, yeah. But I don't have to have any responsibilities yet. Responsibilities for when you're 20 and you have other people to be responsible for. I don't have anybody to be responsible for, but for myself. For me, I live at home, but I don't go to school. But for me not to have a curfew, I have to go to school and I have to be responsible around house. But that's fine because you can't, that's like, you reasonable. can't have everything for yourself. You have to give too, you know? And that's cool. My parents agree to that. I just got to find a school to go to and then everything's fine. <laughs> Like, why does she want to make my life so difficult? What have I done that's so bad, you know? Like, she could have a fucking, she could have a, I mean, I'm not saying it's bad or anything, but she could have, like, a junkie or a prostitute or a fucking car thief or something for a daughter, you know? And all I fucking did was split home and, and, like, this whole life that she condoned for me, she's nurtured it, she, she, she liked it, you know? She taught it to me practically, and then she decided that I couldn't do it anymore, you know? Like, my mother's great. Like, she is. She is a really great mother, and she always was, and I don't, I don't know. Like, maybe... I got beat up in the subway right, and that was the turning point for it all. My mother just decided that I was out too late and things weren't too cool, right? And then she, I mean, I can understand that. She just freaked out and decided that she didn't want to pick me up in a body bag from the morgue, right? Like, that's understandable. She's my mother, but she went, she went, she did it in spades, you know? She went overboard, and that didn't make any sense to me. And she doesn't understand, like, I'm 14 years old. Like, I can't just totally change my lifestyle and give up all my friends. Like, with my kid, my kid's just gonna be like, yeah, you can have your freedom, but if you fuck up, then it gets taken away for a while. Like, freedom should mean something. Like, I never knew how much freedom and friends were important to me until they locked me up. I don't have to worry about anybody else, you know? It's just me. One, two, three, four. snag from now on and here she is the king groupie v-i-a-c-t via cock tease smiles grabs you sits on your knee but will never suck your dick no it's only you steve oh. doesn't matter i didn't want herpes anyways i do i do i do i gotta live with them anyway i might as well get them I mean, that's what I hate. That's what I hate the most, is that girls who fuck around are sluts and guys who fuck around are studs, and that doesn't make any sense to me, because guys get, like, a pat on the back for it, you know? Ah, fuck, I scored three girls last week. All right, you know? And when, we, that, when that happens to us, we get considered sluts, you know? It's... You tell me, man. That doesn't make any sense. But, I mean, anybody in the world can call me a cocktease. I don't care. What the fuck? I'd rather be a cocktease than a slut. Any day. I love the Wilma. With hair like silk, lips like cherries, skin like milk, your shell like ears, your dainty hands, your eyes as black as frying pans. You may be a peach, my love. Together, we're a pair. 
You're sweet, you're nice, you're paradise, and all kinds of stuff Holy like that. Shit, there. you take it easy. sermon tonight to Ed Janet and uh, Janet Daly and Lynn Clayton. We have known Janet for three or four oh, years, Lord. and we have known Lynn for a couple of years, but I can assure you that those two people are deeply in love, and uh, that's the best ingredient for a happy marriage. And a good one. So with those words, I will say to you, Lynn Clayton, you take Janet Daly to be your lawfully wedded wife. I do. You, Janet, here, you take them, Clayton, for your lovely wedding by your husband. I do. Don't do it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the wedding is going to be blessed with a large family. Let's have a good time. 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 let us I've been married to this character for 39 years. I must say, it was always a pleasure. Sometimes it was difficult. I could overlook all that, because a marriage is based on love and trust. <laughs> and if you don't have that, you don't have nothing. You missed it? <laughs> this is what life is all about. Don't worry about tomorrow, because we're not going to change the goddamn rotten government. We're not going to change anything. We've got to make just life for you, me, and everybody else. Hallelujah. You know? Thank you. 
history changes, like societies change, like this one's going to fall and something will take its place. Hopefully it's something better. Democracy is a farce. No such thing. Ask any cop. The government doesn't really know what to do right now, like they're all lost. I don't understand a society that won't do what's best for you. No, honest to God, get the thing on. I'm telling you, I'll rip your fucking arm off. Like, leave the fucking room. Right. <laughs> Tell him to leave the room. Conformity is the cradle of boredom. Revolution, well, like, it's just, that's just like garbage. That's like, you know, 18th century thinking. You guys got anything to say It's important? Yeah, don't fucking film me when I'm taking a piss. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Anarchy and peace, all right. A lot of anarchist philosophy is great in theory, but when it comes right down to fucking doing it, people simply aren't that responsible yet. Amongst the punks, anarchy is just a trendy thing. Talk, Talk minus, minus action, action equals, equals zero. zero. Uh, the government's not threatened by anything we do, because if we were any threat to them, they have the strength to shut anybody down at any time. Anarchy, oh shit, that doesn't work. It, would ne it could never work. <laughs> Goddamn New Year, I think. Uh, government repression and uh, and poor social change. I, I think, like, welcome to 1984, and I'm ready for the Third World War, even if it starts in my own backyard. It's going to start in everyone in the bed. What about having sex? We're all going to die. I don't know. It's all lies. <laughs> everything you hear is lies. Everything is lies. Lies it's available lies. everywhere. Question everything. It's all lies. I think the New Year will bring uh, an end to world starvation for the reintroduction of cannibalism throughout the world. I don't know, I've got nothing to say. We'll probably be hit by a nuclear war any fucking day now. What do you think's gonna happen in the new year? <laughs> what? Oh, in the new year, fuck, I think a bomb's gonna go off any fucking minute. <laughs>
Seven world peace and another life Future is going to back in my Don't fight Back to our place We got to stay My right is sick Yeah, I'm going to die Real fight My right Not to breathe My right Not to die My right We are fine My right60 seconds, your life before your eyes. The blinding white light screams through the sky. D is for death, and it's D-Day today. It's apocalypse now with no time to pray. The survivors are the rich with the power. Zero for the victims who die within an hour. All they care about is their fucking profit. Let's start another war and make some money off it. In the dawn, the generals will have their feast. Barbecued bodies with the smell of victory. Gorging on the flesh, hiding in their shelter, toasting with innocence blood, inventor of the modern hell. If there is going to be a war, I'd sure be out hopping in the woods with my own gun. Uh, personally, I don't give a fuck for Canada. I couldn't give a damn for this country. I wouldn't fight for it. I wouldn't fight for uh, Western capitalism or Russian communism. I just want to live through the whole shit, Paul. They're going to drop the bombs in the cities, fine. I'll be out in some woodlands going, oops. But <laughs> I want to live, that's it. I wouldn't trust the other countries if they, if there was like a nuclear freeze. I mean, if you could get everybody to say, okay, we're going to stop using nuclear arms, I don't think you'd ever do that. I think that they'd keep building up and we keep building up silently. Because what would we do, man? Like we, you know, we, we have a, a nuclear arms freeze in the States and then like 20 years down the line, you know, Russia knocks on the door and says, okay, well, surrender or we're going to blow the fuck out of you because we've got this much more weapons than you do. And what are you going to do? As long as you want to try to uh, to live your ideals, to, to live what you feel, then there's always hope. There's always hope that there will be enough people who feel the same way you do, who can fight the government, and maybe we can get change. What are you saying out there to those people? To those people? Yeah, to all of them. To loosen up, man. Yeah. That life, you've got to laugh in life, damn it. It's not, the media is trying to fuck us all up. It's trying to make us go like, you know, like, ah, we're all going to die, you know, nuclear bomb. <clears throat> you know, who cares, man? We're going to die anyway. <laughs>
<laughs> How about an obituary for the punk culture or whatever? God save us from ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank you.